What up gamers, I'm Sir Mav and today I'm bringing you the very first episode of an ongoing series for Battlefield 5. This is the Arsenal series where together we will deep dive into each weapon for Battlefield 5 within each class and compare them to one another to provide insight on which is truly the best weapon within each class for the battlefield. This could take a while so buckle up and enjoy the ride. First off, I just wanted to give a shout out to my subs here on the channel. 500 subscribers is an amazing milestone to hit and I will continue to do my best and provide you with the content you want here at iGame. Thank you so much for the support and if you're not a subscriber yet, feel free to tap fire below and hit the notification bell as together we continue this amazing journey to 1000. So before we get started with all the guns in the assault class, there's going to be quite a bit of information shared in this video, so there will be timestamps in the description box below for each gun and topic, and I will have the Excel sheet uploaded to the shared Google Drive so you can see the data firsthand. If you find this video helpful, share with your platoon, click the like button, and let me know what helped out the most within the comments section. I will be covering each class in this series, so let me know which class you want me to cover next up in the poll above, and give me your feedback down below in the comments. This will also allow me to ensure that I cover the information that's most useful to you. Remember also that the team at DICE will likely tweak some numbers as they look to balance the game, so as these changes come to fruition, I will retest and upload the data back up as soon as possible. If you look within your company on each soldier class, you probably notice, for example, when we go to replace our weapon that it states 10 out of 11 weapons for the assault class, but only 10 are showing. So there is likely another assault weapon on the way within Chapter 2 Lightning Strikes. In these cases, I'll create a separate video for each new weapon showcased and compare them with the other weapons in its class. With that all out of the way, let's get into the analysis. So since the practice range was not as viable as I thought it would be and doesn't allow you to use the new weapons added into the game or incorporate their specializations, I had to load into empty servers out in Britain and other places out of the US servers to test out each assault weapon. This simply allowed me and my other testers, shout out to my awesome wife and brother-in-law, to test each weapon without interruption. In the first test, we had to hide along a tree line on Twisted Metal as tanks rolled on by. One pestered me enough that I had to take him out, but that's another story. During the tests, I gathered data on headshot and body damage of each gun for 5, 20, and 40 meters, and emptied every weapon's magazine to zero multiple times to thoroughly test the reload speed timing. Doing this also allowed me to get an understanding of the damage drop-off patterns for each gun. When I get into the medic class, I will definitely test at 10 meters as SMGs are more close quarters than the other three classes. Such things as rate of fire and magazine size are already available to us as we look at the stats of each weapon within the menu screen, so it was easy to break down bullets per second and how many times we could reload our gun until we finally ran out of ammo. So once we get to the final graphs, they'll take into account burst damage, reload time, and ammo to allow us a full understanding of which weapon is best for sustained fight against the enemy. Remember, we have attrition in this game, so having a support, medics, or a supply cache around is also important. But in this case, we're going to look at the data more along the lines of weapon damage output. Now, most of everyone's playstyle is different in Battlefield 5, but most of my engagements in Battlefield 5 and what I've seen have been within the 5 to 20 meter range when facing the enemy team. So graphs that I showcase will be based on the average of these two data points. I'm also estimating the amount of body shots and headshots a player hits within Battlefield, so if you're a headshot master, your damage output will be different than what you see in these graphs. But this is more about consistency to truly find out head to head which weapon is best in the assault class. Skill is still required in Battlefield, but this data will help improve your odds as you become better at the game. So with the data average, it will be based on the profile of an enemy soldier at 90% body damage and 10% headshot damage, just to give us a baseline of each weapon's overall damage output. So let's break down the math using the first weapon on the list, the Sturmgewehr 1.5. The Sturmgewehr at 5 meters does 52 damage to the head and 32 to the body. At 20 meters it impacts its target for 45 damage to the head and 22 to the body. Here you can also get a sense of the drop off of damage between these two distances. So once you have these two data points, you take the average of the head damage and body damage which would be 49 and 27 respectively. Last, to get the damage showcased in the graph, we need to calculate the hypothetical percentage of headshots and body shots hit. In this case, we're basing it off the profile of a soldier, so it would be 10% damage for the head and 90% for the body, which makes the calculation 49 times 10% plus 27 times 90%. This equals to a damage output of 29 for the Sturmgewehr 1.5. When all the data and calculations are entered and we take into account reload speed and ammo available, we get this massive line graph. You should notice rather quickly that there are more than just 10 lines here which is the amount of weapons within the assault class currently. 
That's because each gun comes with a damage output enhancing specialization such as the extended magazine, increase in reload speed, or rate of fire increases. The DICE team made it to where you have to make choices within these specializations, so there are pros and cons to the choices you make here. I'm just here to help you decide whether or not it's worth choosing the DPS specialization or taking another route. But again, specializations will all be based on your playstyle and what you find more useful on the battlefield. I'm just here to present the numbers and based on those, provide you with the best weapons in battlefield based on the data. So you've seen the massive graph, but what does it all mean? Well, when choosing a weapon in Battlefield, you have to consider the map you're playing on and how you and your squad will approach it. Are you going to be close quarters most of the time, or are you on a map like Hamada or Panzerstorm, where a lot of engagements will be at long distances? Because of the choice you have to make here, I'm splitting the weapons up into automatic rifles and semi-auto rifles. The reason being is that the automatic rifles have a more aggressive damage drop off than the semi-auto rifles which makes the automatic weapons more viable at medium to close range and the semi-automatic weapons useful at longer ranges, sometimes even out sniping some snipers if your aim is on point. You can see here on the screen within the table shown an example of two automatic rifles and two semi-auto rifles. Most semi-auto rifles don't have a drop off until about 35 meters according to the last patch notes, so this definitely makes them more viable at longer distances. Let's start off with the automatic rifles. Let me break down the graph before we get into each weapon in the assault class. Along the x-axis of the graph we have time in seconds, and along the y-axis we have the amount of damage you can accumulate with each gun over time. When you see a line stop proceeding up along the y-axis and flatline, this signifies a reload, which also plays a part as it takes into account how fast you can get back into the action. So first up on the list of automatic rifles is the Sturmgewehr 1.5. This is also the first weapon you have unlocked in the Assault class. The Sturmgewehr showcases the second fastest rate of fire at 670 and a healthy amount of ammo with 31 in the magazine and a max of 124 bullets you can carry. I clocked its reload speed at 3 seconds but comes with a quick reload specialization which pushes the reload time down to 2.55 seconds. FYI I'm not covering all the specializations in this video, only those that affect the weapon's damage output. Given the Sturmgewehr's beam-like accuracy, rate of fire, and one of the fastest reload speeds in the Assault class, this is one of the best weapons to use in any engagement. On par with the Sturmgewehr, we have the 1907 SF. The 1907 has the fastest fire rate out of the Assault class at 770, a reload speed of 3 seconds, but where it lacks is overall ammo, so you'll want to stay close to ammo crates or a support team member with this weapon. The magazine size is standard at 16 bullets with an overall total of 112 you can carry on your person. With this extended mag specialization though comes an interesting part. When equipping this specialization you improve the magazine size to 21, but you lose out on all your total ammo as it drops to 105. In this special case it's best to bypass the extended mag specialization on this one unless you know you'll be rolling with a support on your team or you'll be keeping close to an ammo cache. Then we have my golden gun, the STG-44. I'm not saying the STG is the best, it's just a fun gun to use. The STG comes in with a solid 600 rate of fire and plenty of ammo with 31 bullets in the magazine and 124 on your person. The STG also has a tied reload speed of 2 seconds which allows you to get back into the fight faster when you run out of ammo. There's no DPS specialization for the STG so use whichever fits the map and your playstyle. Last up in the automatic rifles is the Ribioles 1907. The Ribioles comes in with the slowest rate of fire at 540, 25 bullets in the magazine and 125 bullets total on your person. This gun has the same reload speed as the STG but thanks to a reload speed specialization this gun has the fastest reload speed clocked at 1.7 seconds which makes it useful in laying down fire on an enemy, reloading behind cover and then coming back to give them a second dose. This is the only assault rifle which also comes with its own bipod, making it a laser beam when propped up on any ledge or while prone. But let's be honest, unless you're hiding under a tree or using an MG, going prone is just going to get you killed. So with all this information laid out for us, it's easy to say that the overall best weapon for the automatic assault weapons is the first weapon you unlock, the Sturmgewehr 1.5. Again, play with the gun you love or feels the most comfortable with your playstyle, but in medium to close quarters, the numbers don't lie. The Sturmgewehr has a solid reload speed, its burst damage is slightly below the 1907, but you can almost sustain double the damage, and you have more ammo, meaning more time attacking the enemy and less time looking for ammo and having to switch to your sidearm. Now, let's get into the more medium range semi-auto rifles of the Assault class. So as I stated before, the semi-auto rifles are more for medium range combat. Not to say you can't go close quarters with them, but you have to be accurate to go up against those faster rate of fire weapons. 
With the semi-auto rifles, you can definitely see the damage numbers for each weapon are more spread out. This is due to some of these weapons taking a long time to reload, such as the AGM-42 which takes a full 5 seconds without the quick reload specialization. So now let's break down these rifles. Starting off we have the Gewehr 43. The Gewehr 43 has the slowest rate of fire of all assault weapons at 300 and ties at the lowest amount of ammo with 10 total in the two clips you load into the mag, but you can increase this with a detachable mag specialization that increases to 11 in the mag and 55 total. The reload speed also clocked at 4 seconds so you can leave yourself quite vulnerable with this gun once you deplete your mag. Next up we have the M1A1 Carbine, which is arguably one of the best guns for an assault out on the battlefield, but we'll let the data decide. The M1A1 sports a rate of fire at 450 and an ammo loadout of 16 in the magazine with a total of 112 on your person, but this can be increased to 31 and 93 with an extended mag. Interesting thing about the M1A1 is that it doesn't seem to have a rate of fire block, so you can actually fire off the gun as fast as you can pull the trigger. This actually makes this weapon viable at close range and medium if you can maintain accuracy, and with a reload speed of 3 seconds you can get back into the fight rather quickly. The next gun up is the Turner SMLE which is very similar to the M1A1 carbine. It has a rate of fire set at 360 but packs more of a punch on its targets. With a reload speed of 4 seconds, it puts the SMLE on par with the other semi-auto rifles. The downside of this weapon is ammo. It comes in at the same mag size as the Gewehr 43 with 10 bullets and 50 on your person but this can be increased further than the Gewehr with the extended mag that ups it to 20 in the mag and 60 total bullets. Because of its damage output, this gun takes the top spot as far as burst damage goes with semi-auto rifles. Next up we have the Selbstlada 1916, another Battlefield 1 weapon. The Selbstlada showcases the slowest rate of fire at 225, even with the rate of increase specialization it still only pushes this weapon to 257. Although the slowest rate of fire, it does have a substantial mag size at 26 but only a total of 78 bullets to use in all. With a slow reload speed of 4 seconds, you'll want to keep your distance when engaging the enemy with this weapon. If you're looking to engage the enemy for a sustained amount of time, we have the Gewehr 1.5. The semi-auto version of the automatic Sturmgewehr, the Gewehr 1.5 has a solid rate of fire at 360 and houses a mag of 31 bullets and 124 total on its person. With the standard reload speed of 3 seconds which can be increased to 2.55 seconds puts this gun at a solid contender with the Turner SMLE, just with more ammo. Last up we have the AG M42 that we received for completing the last chapter 1 Tides of War assignment. The AG is exactly like the M1A1 carbine as far as fire rate goes, the downside is you have less ammo to work with so you have to make your shots count. The mag only holds 10 bullets with 60 total on hand. The reload speed doesn't help its case either as it's the slowest speed in the assault class at 5 seconds. The AG is also the only assault weapon to have two DPS choices. You could either choose to the extended mag which increases the mag to 11 and a total of 66 bullets or go with an increase in reload speed. But that specialization only decreases the reload speed to a measly 4.25 seconds so stick with the extra bullets given its fire rate. The plus to this weapon though is the damage drop off. It by far has the lowest damage drop off of any weapon as you can still two shot an enemy at 80 meters with massive speed. Of course at that distance it's still a difficult shot even with a medium scope. With this data there are three solid semi-auto rifles you should be using in Battlefield 5. The Turner SMLE as it showcases the highest burst damage of all the semi-auto rifles and the M1A Carbine and Gewehr 1.5. Each of these three weapons have similar burst damage, but with additional ammo, the Gewehr 1.5 keeps you in the fight longer without having to break off and go find ammo. Again, your preference matters here, but based on the numbers, these are the weapons that will allow you to do the most damage and stay in the fight longer. So there's all the data for each weapon in the Assault class for Battlefield 5. If you're still here, thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions on this data, or if you'd like to see something else tested for Battlefield. Again, the Excel data is showcased within the Google Docs link and I'll update as new guns come out for Battlefield 5. Keep it locked here at iGame for more on the Arsenal series and don't forget to tap fire that bell so you're notified when the next video drops. Talk to you next time gamers. This is Sir Mav, signing off.